usually there's four ways to attract women, right? There's looks, there's status, there's money, and there's game, social skills, right? So before you just needed one, but now you definitely need two. If you're like a seven, game and style adds two points. So he's like, yeah. if you're a seven, you can get a nine if you have proper game. We went a little bit, I'm curious. So you had a few, 600 to 1,000 followers. How did you talk to us about that journey from 600 to 10,000, from 10,000 to 50,000? Okay, yeah. So 10,000, 10, I got it from another dating show from Dating No Filter. Okay. And then another like 10,000, I got it from TikTok in Taiwan. So when we had the COVID crisis, I was in Taiwan, I was doing TikTok. So if you go to my TikTok, it's not doing so well, but it had 36K in two, three months. So I think I got 10 to 20K from that TikTok. From got TikTok. It. TikTok removed yeah. the, the Instagram and the YouTube links, I think. They, they, they yeah. Took. Oh, that, okay. That, yeah. But back in the day, when TikTok first came out, I was getting big during COVID. I got yeah. 10K from there. I got mm -hmm. another like, couple K from Clubhouse. I was doing Clubhouse in Korea, and I have a big Clubhouse following at the time. I had like 2,000. Okay. Uh, actually, no, I had 10,000 followers in Clubhouse. So yeah, so you got a couple thousand there. But let me tell you something. I got to Thailand at 25K. So this is for Instagram growth. Honestly, I don't teach this. I'm actually thinking of maybe teaching it. I'm just telling you what I experienced. And I have proof. I have photos where, like, this is all organic, where if people think I just bought my followers, look at my engagement. But I actually have my engagement data. Um, and I, why would I pay this much money just to get 100K followers? It was stupid. I would never do that. Uh, maybe a little bit, like maybe get 5K followers. But let me tell you how I got 100K. I had 25K followers when I got to Thailand, right, in January. And then I got like a thousand or two thousand, maybe five thousand from the show, but the show didn't do well. So then the biggest thing happened was I started doing reels every day. So I did reels, and obviously I had my abs, so I showed more of my abs. Um, and then I started getting more followers. But I do think there's a couple things that I don't want to talk about now because I want to make sure it's the truth, and I don't want people to be like, "Oh, Danny, you just said this and it didn't work." I do think the location matters. But let me tell you the secret once I actually create a program about that because I don't want to tell you guys bs but i do think me being in southeast asia my look works here right and i'm definitely using the good looking guy so it's the niche i'm using the niche there it has to be a niche to build your followers but for normal average joes you don't need 100k i'm telling you straight up if you're just you're going to use instagram for dating you don't need that much it's not necessary trust me got it so you blew up when you kind of became a thirst trap through your reach. yeah yeah <laughs> i guess i'll admit that Yep, there's the theories, bro. Okay, because I'm I'm kind of curious about your experience. I have my own if you are curious, but what percentage of those are guys, gay guys versus girls? Bro, I'll be honest, man. Uh <laughs> having a lot of followers, it's mostly dudes DMing me. So there's a couple of girls here that does it work better when I DM girls? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I have to still do yeah, DMs, so but you're using DMs, social proof. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. But the DMs coming are definitely not these instagram models that i thought possibly I, I i the only reason i came up with that question is because i have the same problem so um but the, my TikTok though i do have a lot of guys following me that actually need help so that's good but like yeah, yeah. with reels what you put out is kind of attracting the people that are gravitating towards your videos right and so yeah. that, that becomes like your angle or your market if you will um, yeah okay so, so reels that yeah 5k to 100k most of that yeah yeah that's a big that's pretty fast growth like that's pretty quick 25 no 25k to 100k yeah 25. just with uh 45 25 25 20, yeah yeah that's what i said 25 to 100 yeah, yeah. reels that's a lot yeah. yeah dude it was crazy i'm not even i was shocked I was, even like me i'm just like kind of like thinking like how this happened but you gotta think about it right but let's go back to how guys could use it right unless you're trying to be an influencer this would help i guess but Let's just go back to normal people or just guys who don't want to be an influencer. You need to target your audience, which is the women you want to date, right? So you're like, oh, but I want to date girls who have blue check marks and are hot. Bro, it's, this is where I got to have one-on-one -on -one talk with you. You just need to look like an attractive guy. And that doesn't mean like me. That doesn't mean like you, Joanna. It's about what you look and what you bring to a dating, dating um, when you date a girl, what, what value you bring. So that's what I do for normal guys who doesn't want to be an influencer. You don't need 10K. You don't need 20K. Like, you just don't need all these crazy followers. Social proof helps, but you still got them. And the thing is, if you, let's say a guy says, okay, I want to just buy 10K then and take nice pictures. No, like, you got to have this. Why are you having 10K, right? Because girls will call you out, right? So it's, it's, it is kind of like a 
behind the scenes is a lot at first, but once you get the habit of it, you can build it pretty well. My mentor was um, Darren Fuji, DJ Fuji. So yeah, you train with JT. So I, I he always told me like, okay, if you're like a seven, game and style adds two points. So he's like, yeah. if you're a seven, you can get a nine if you have proper game. If you're a five, yeah. you get a seven. You know what I mean? So it's still within reason. But he's like, if you're a five with looks and everything else, and you're trying to get a nine, that's a big jump, right? And so there is a there is a a, a threshold of like realistic expectations right as far as as far as expectations go but i do think every guy can become attractive through behavior no matter what it's mm. just well i don't know maybe maybe you have a different view but i just feel like you can take him two points higher with proper game and training within a few months but beyond that i think it takes more effort to go further what are your thoughts so i remember uh i give credit to another mentor coach chef Khan. he said this right Usually there's four ways to attract women, right? There's looks, there's status, there's money, and there's game, social skills, right? And I remember we had a recent conversation like two, three years ago that now you need, before you could do it one, right? You could just do one of them. So game, and then status, you can do status, uh, and then money, and then, uh, wait, I said game. Oh, game, looks, status, and money. So before you just needed one, but now you definitely need two. Like you, you need to, like there's no, so like, I actually think, okay, so of course, it depends on what you want, right? So you're right. If a guy's a five, can he get a six or a seven girl? Yeah, of course. Like, we game, you can do it. But here's the thing, though. If you're hitting above your belt, eventually, she's going to realize what I think. So it depends. Are you just So what's your goal? If you're just trying to have this one night stand, whatever, okay, fine. That's your business. For me, I'm trying to make you attractive lifestyle. So let's say you get a girl who's a seven and you're a five. How long are you going to keep her for? If you're a five for the rest of your life, do you think a girl after she lives a let's say a seven is like a a ribeye, right? A nice ribeye steak. Why the hell would she go to a, a ham bore a, a dried what is it like beef jerky? If you're eating ribeye, why would you go to beef jerky? Like I one time you want, but you just need enough time for her to fall in love with you. Because once she falls in love with you, those SMB value goes out the window. It depends though, right? Because think about like this. If 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 you're not improving every single day as man, yes, she falls in love with you. She falls in love. Let's say she falls in love. But what is she falling in love with you with? Your five self or this self that you talk with your game? So for me, eventually after I teach all the tactics and stuff, I tell them like you need to step up. Like so for me, because I am trying to get the highest quality, right, in terms of the women I want, but it, it's like a different world out there. Because a girl who is a 10, who's living a certain lifestyle, doesn't mean she's a gold there, she's just living a certain lifestyle. How much, how much, what, you take her to, let's say you do the Burning Man thing, or you take her to the hippies thing, and she kind of likes the camping life. You think she'll be a camper or live in a van with you for a whole year? Or she's going to want to go back to the Four Seasons? Like, you get what I mean? Like, guys have to really think about this. Like, switch places with the girl. Right. I'm gonna, play I'm gonna play devil's advocate because I know okay, exactly yeah. how you're thinking, and that's how I think too. <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. Yeah. So like we have this trauma. You were fat, I was skinny, and we're just like getting the hottest girl equals no pain, no more bullying, right? So th there is a certain obsession that I can see in your eyes when you talk about this that I have too, which yeah, is yeah. the hottest girl because that that's means the the elimination elimination of pain or we feel this pressure like because we're the best of our race that we have yeah. to prove something or we have to do it for the other guys yeah i get that as i was dating girls in la when i had my pretty good streak uh, my business was doing well we got invited to parties that normal people wouldn't be invited to i started to realize that some of these girls it's all facade or it's like so spiritually empty when i talk to them and so yeah. when, after I went on, the, I went on a different path where I was looking for girls that looked like that, who didn't necessarily live that lifestyle. So a good example is uh, Larry Page, right? The CEO of Google, uh, founder of Google. His wife is a Stanford PhD student, but she looks like a blonde model. So I started going on a different path. I'm just wondering if you have any experience with that or like, have you dated these type of girls that have this lifestyle? What was your experience like? To me, I remember waking up next to them and feeling like, sad because it was like yeah. the same thing over and over again what was your what about you was that your experience or was that different so i think like 
I first try not to draw that. So one of the advanced things I teach, um, and that was like, I, I always tell us, I, I can always tell a student is beginner advanced or intermediate by what he says. Once he starts generalizing girls, I know he's not advanced. If you keep saying all girls do this, all girls do that, I know you're not advanced because every girl is different. I remember when I knew I got good was, I knew that each girl is different. When I, when I talk to a girl, I see what she wants, what's her value. Because there's some hot girls who definitely live this lifestyle. There's some hot girls who don't, whatever. But it's up to us to figure that out. Because even with now Instagram, everyone markets themselves in the best way, right? So it's up to me to really figure out um, what she wants, what she values, right? So my experience was, it, it really depends. There's some really pretty girls who like, I remember this one girl I met while traveling, like, man, she was such a keeper. But like, she was just so raw. She was, so, she was, she was young. She was like 20 to 21, I think. 21. But like, she was so raw. She just wanted a family. Like she's a, it's a beautiful girl who doesn't want to be on Instagram. She just wanted a family, right? So if she wants a family. As a guy, if you want a girl who just wants to be with family, then you marry this girl. Because she's beautiful. She's young. And she has, what, only like one or two experiences with other guys. Like that's the thing. But as guys, like we, you know, I got too far to the journey where I just wanted more and more and more. And you're right. I got felt empty. But for me, how I see is this, right? This whole, the, the thing is, I'm never empty because of a girl, though. I know that for a fact. For, let's talk about inner game real quick. It's not because I'm empty because she's next to me. It's empty because I'm obviously doing something that's not in line with me. It's never about a hot girl or an ugly girl. To be honest, like now, like I don't even like going on dates. So to be honest, like I'm not even trying sometimes. And is it is it bad? No, I mean, right now, I just don't want to try. I just don't want to take girls out on dates. So if she's willing to just meet and hang out and just do literally go to the gym, I take them on gym dates. If she doesn't want to go to the gym, I don't go to, I don't go on a date with her. I'm not even kidding. It's like, what's the point? Because I don't want to make that effort. And it's not like I'm trying to be this hot guy. It's just like, I know I'm not going to make an effort. So with guys who are just starting out, you got to make an effort. So here's how I see it, right? Actually, Giovanni, I had a coach with my other, talk with my other coach and he talked about this. He says, you can be happy before you get rich. You can be happy before you get all the materialistic things that you want. You're supposed to be happy before that. And that's what I'm working on. So I've been asking myself, but then what is it that I want? Do I really want a million dollars? Do I really want the hot girl? But right now, I don't know these answers, right? I don't know if I'm really going to be happy with the hot girl. I don't know. And the fact that I'm asking is already says, like, okay, what do I really want? I haven't figured that out yet. If Best advice I'll tell you for any students who's trying to work with me and Giovanni, come to us first knowing what you want. If you're clear on what you want, then we can get what you want. That's like the number one thing. But everyone in game doesn't know what they want. And they just go on this path in circles and they just keep chasing. But let me keep this short. This is what I realized. Like in the end, though, since I don't know what I want, I just just get go for it at least. Because like right now, I don't know if I want marriage or I want um, just a hot girl, right? Like the Playboy life. I don't know, but at least I'll do both. Because you could do both. One girl, maybe I'll date seriously. Oh, I, I think she's really cool. I'm gonna try to date her seriously, which I tried and it didn't it didn't work out, but I tried. So I'd rather try to get a goal than just sit on my butt thinking like. What do I really want in life? I want to meditate for six hours and think about this. And then I, once I figure it out, I'll just manifest it. Bro, like, whatever you want to do, make sure happy do it. But I, I've been doing enough self-work where I realized I'd rather just take action. And then once I get something and then I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm getting close to it, but I don't think I want this. And I'll just, I'll just let it go then. But I think based on your answer is I don't know. Giovanni, like my my experience is I have amazing memories with all the women I've dated. Some of them were fun, some of them were casual, some of them were deep, whatever it was. Um, but like this is my life, and I guess for me, it's like I know the answer is there once I figure out what I want. But right now, I just don't know. I thought I wanted marriage and kids. Um, that went out the window a little bit. Um, do I want a girlfriend again? I tried to get a girlfriend like two months ago. I was kind of serious and exclusive with this one girl, didn't work out. But I know it's all me. It's something in my head, uh, in my heart. So it's it's to the answer to that question. Yeah, I guess that's not a concrete answer, but it's really based on what you want. It, it, I never, when I'm unhappy, I never blame the girl. It's literally you. Like, even if a girl rejects me, it's me. You obviously didn't bring enough value. And I'm not saying like, oh, be sad. I'm saying you obviously didn't, she didn't find you attractive for a certain reason. So either you become the man she wants to be attracted to or move on. You got what I mean? Yeah. Uh, two things, two different mentors said to me when I started the game. I didn't understand it until later on. But one of them said, 
the girl will not make you happy. On the journey, it's not about the girls you get, it's about the man you become as a part of that process of learning how to get girls. And oh, yeah. I, that's like, I, didn't, I think that was that was Eric, but I didn't understand uh, that until later on when I when I got the girl I wanted and I was still unhappy. And I was like, hmm, something's wrong here, what's going on? So I had to resolve yeah. all that trauma from high school that drove me because to me, I associated with getting the hottest girl as being cool in high school and not getting bullied and no pain, right? So that drove me yeah. around and I had to resolve, unwind all of those uh, anchors that were already in my head mm. from a young age. Last question I have for you is um, for Asian guys, right? Um, what do you do? I know your clients seem to be a little bit more, like have a lot more money, travel a lot more. My clients are all over like different college to divorce, living in the States. But with Asian guys, sometimes we have an unconscious social bias, right? Especially if they don't look like you or me. How do you help them deal with that? Because when you talk, you know this, when you talk to a, a non-Asian girl, and when I got out of college, it was like this invisible wall, you know, we call it like a bamboo wall, where it's like you can't yeah. push through and she's just not interested. So yeah. uh, how do you help your students do that? Because I have the, I would love to hear your thoughts on, on that. Okay, so first, like I said, yeah, I do screen my students. Uh, I first need to know if they're trying to improve themselves as everything. If they're just trying to learn game from me. To me, it's like, I've been in this journey for long where I know just game is not gonna help. At least this is my belief, just game won't help. I believe there has to be a, just more, like I just told you, right? There's two things you need, game and something else. So I look at the student and if I do decide to work with them, I ask them, okay, we do a breakdown. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Okay, but the strengths, like for example, a lot of guys, a lot of my guys want fit girls, right? Girls who like look really good fit, right? They're good, they look good naked, you can say. And sometimes I ask them straight up, and they, if they're too cocky, I say, get naked in the mirror for me. Don't show me, but get naked in the mirror for me. Look at yourself. Would you date you? Would you do stuff to yourself right now? And and sometimes you need that wake up call. And that's why I kind of do what I do or charge what I do is because I'm honest. I'm never gonna bullshit you um, because a lot of these guys, they need a wake up call. They need to be told straight up, like, dude, you're not living a life where I don't even wanna be part of your life. Like as a friend, the way you live, all you do is stay home. So initially I start with that. I say, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? What is the value you could bring to the girl first? Because you have to, like, that's that's a relationship. Like, in the end, you could BS all one, but a relationship is a mutual exchange of values and feelings and whatever. Like, even falling in love, she's falling in love for a reason. You're giving her something to her. Um, so I see that first, and then I see their weaknesses, and I say, what is the weakness you can prove on? So the face, right? Yeah, you can't change the face, but first, are they overweight and look older because they're overweight? Because I've experienced that. Do they have acne scars? Can you remove that? What's so wrong? If you have the money, do later. Okay, let's say they have no money. First of all, I think if they have no money, no income, do anything, like you need to first figure that out because the hierarchy of needs, right? Uh, hunger, food, shelter, money, whatever. If you can't do that, you, can, you why shouldn't you focus on growth? You need to focus on yourself. So that's even, that's the way out. But let's say you have some kind of job, whatever. You need to find a way to be like, okay, how can I improve myself? You should be not be spending money on games. You should not be spending money on like all this stuff. You need to spend money on yourself, right? Like you really do have to invest in yourself. Um, so that's what I do. I ask, so let's, let's say one of the guys is short, right? I have ways to make them taller, but they're really adamant. The living beliefs like, dude, I'm short. You don't want to tell them straight up. Then go get surgery in China to break your knees and get three inches taller. That's actually a surgery that does that. I know, but it's brought, not worth it. the risk reward is so not worth it. But here's the thing though. It, and that's why I tell the students though, straight up. If you want to do that, if you're going to keep complaining to me that you're short, then you can do that or have other ways, right? That, look, for example, here's another thing. I'll just give you, I'll just give you one thing I teach my students. Sorry. There's certain shoes that make you look taller. You know that, right? There's certain shoes that make you actually taller. Guys, are you hearing this? There's certain shoes that make you look taller by two, three inches. Boots. Boots make you look taller. Like, this is the crazy part, right? Like guys are not, all I, the students I want to work with are the ones that like are open-minded about what I teach because it, at first it's going to feel awkward. But that's why I say like, I need, to, what I do is I focus on their strengths and their weaknesses. And the weaknesses, I focus on what can they work on? What is actually controllable? What is something I could raise two, one, two, three points on, right? And if I could do that, then dude, like even if you're a four or three, like 
you can go up four points. And the thing about game, like, let's be honest, Joe, I've been in the game for eight years, 10 years. You've been in the game for 10 years. They don't got time for that. Most of my progress are six to eight weeks. So I need to do other things because most of that, the end, don't want to put in the hours we do. They don't want to do 35,000 approaches. They just don't. They just don't. So what I try to do is like, okay, I'll make you good in one thing and also gain. Let's put it together so they kind of become a fusion. And then it, it, it makes games easier. Because I'll be honest, my first few years, I know game help, but it was my looks. 100%. I'm not going to be at you. Like, I, why do you think I get jacked every day? Why do I work out every day to try to have abs? Because it helps my game. It makes my game, if my game's like a seven or eight, it makes it a nine sometimes that the girl likes my body. You go to me. So instead of me just trying to become a 10 in game, which it's a lot of inner game, right? At our level, it's all inner. I'm trying to try like, okay, Instagram. Why am I making so much effort on Instagram? Because it helps your game. At first, she sees you as a five, then she's your Instagram. Now she sees you as a seven. So then with seven, you just have the gamer to like, what? Interest level to like three more spots. Like, it's just math, right? It just makes so much logical sense. Like, why are you guys focusing on, anyway, I know that's your body. That's something you might just teach game, but you also teach fashion and everything. But I'm like, why make it hard? You're not trying to be master dating coaches. You just want to get a girlfriend. So then it's, I give you eight weeks, six to eight weeks. Usually it takes eight weeks because the student doesn't listen sometimes. Game is something else. I'll teach you. And then you cohesively make yourself better in like multiple ways. And it's more efficient because, dude, you can't learn game in six weeks, bro. That's what the boot camp thing failed. It just failed. It's a, it's a failure of system. Three day boot camps is a failed system. Sorry for anybody who does that. I'm sorry. It's just, I don't do that anymore. It's just, it's, it's just what you're going to help guys approach 10 girls, 20 girls a night and say, yes, your life's going to change in like the rest of your life. You know what I mean? That's a failed system. At least it's my opinion. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I have a couple of uh, thoughts. I think that as coaches, one of our the parts of our job is to reveal the truth to our clients in a way that yes. they understand. And sometimes the truth is holding up a mirror, as you say, like, dude, this is where you are now. Unless yeah. you're honest with yourself about where you are, I can't move you forward, right? Yeah. In the beginning of my career, guys would pretend they're cooler because I had a kind of a big blog going on, and they would tell me, oh, I'm here, but really they're here. And so I had to learn oh, yeah. to uh, vulnerability where it's like, yo, listen, I used to be a huge nerd. Here's a picture. And then they would tell me the truth about where they are. And only when they tell me the truth of where they are could I actually help them. Because then it's like, oh, here's exactly where you are. And then I know the steps to go forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You can't, not everyone wants to do, not everyone should do 35. If you're doing 35,000 approaches with your life, get a better life. <laughs> um, I, the only reason I did it no, was. No, you have a good life. Yeah. You, but it works, though. If they do 30, yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah. But I did it by myself for many years, trial and error, which the yeah. benefit is I developed my own system. The drawback of that is it's too much time. So I say to my clients, like, learn what I what took me a long time to learn, but it doesn't take you as long. And I think yeah, yeah, with yeah. camps or with even I think residentials are better with what you stay for a week to 10 days with the guy where you soak up like the energy and the lifestyle. Yeah. That, helps because you're not necessarily teaching them everything you know, you're planting seeds, right? And those seeds will yeah. grow. So you teach them the yeah. principle. And then maybe a few months later, like, oh, I remember what Giovanni told me about escalation. I, I just I just see it now. That's exactly what I needed to do with this thing I just had. So I think yeah. when you, you're a good coach, you plant different, almost like so based software code that you know will execute later on that will help them like, yeah. gain more knowledge. Um, but you're right. It, it doesn't, one bootcamp doesn't necessarily work. Sometimes I think the bootcamps that were most useful for me when I started was when I saw a guy who looked like me, or even I thought not as good looking as me, get results. And just mm -hmm. seeing that and being around that, uh, I had a, I had a mentor called Troy. He's a short Asian guy. And he would just like stop girls on the street. Girls will stop and talk to him on the street. And I was like, how's he doing this? And so yeah. I think for me, it was just like breaking those limited beliefs and seeing that it was possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do think they're useful, but yeah, you're right. Like it does take like a few months. If you don't know anything, it takes a few months to up your style, up your game, up your social media skills. And if you have the right direction, yes, it is effort, but it's efficient effort. What took us years to learn? They, if they had our coaching and the proper feedback loop, they can do yeah. it in two to three months. They can replicate yeah. a big portion, 50, 60% of our success that took 10 years in a matter of 90 days, maybe less, right? Yeah. So that's, I think, the massive value we add as coaches. 
and if the client's willing to do the work, sometimes the results are amazing. I know I would tell my clients like just do the work, minimal work, and you'll see results. And the funny thing is, a lot of them don't do the work. Sometimes they feel so, good paying you money. <laughs> dude, that's so that's what that's where I'm in a dilemma, right? Because like, yeah, that's what you said, you're right, right? Like we all know it took us years to get this skill. And these guys, especially the clients, maybe you and I work with, they want it in a, such a short amount of time. They want it in a result. And I remember I'm just like, I kind of want to tell them, like, do you understand, like, if I if I had guaranteed, if I, I don't do guarantees, because obviously in dating, it's always another person involved. But if I could guarantee, I would charge a million dollars for this. If I could get someone what I have in, in six weeks, I would charge a million dollars straight up. If there's a, actually, I would pay another coach. If he tells me I could get very attractive women in six weeks, guaranteed, I would charge, I'll pay a million. I'll take out a loan, but give me a million because that would change my life forever. 100%. But these guys, they want it usually cheaper, they want it shorter, and they want to do minimal work. But guys, like, this is your life. You're the video game character. You And like, when students don't want to buy the things that I buy, so I literally, some of these shoes I buy, even the shirt, right? There's like a very, I want to tell, I want to tell students to buy this. I'm actually trying this out. I just bought one brand just to see if this helps. They're like having a nice brand shirt. But I actually have these one shoes, right? They make me taller, right? And they're a little pricey. Like 400 pounds, but I tell them I bought it too. Okay, I bought it. I even used like a credit card for it. Why won't you buy it? If a coach is telling you to buy something, why won't you buy it? And this is the only frustration I have with my clients is like, guys, I will never tell you to do something that I haven't done, you know. So, guys, please, like, this is not even about money, just invest in yourself. Like, please, like, if you're not going to invest in yourself and you're spending five grand in the rent, what you're paying three grand for a house, house is important, but like, you're probably spending a lot of money on other useless things where you could invest in you and us coaches we actually care i want to make you great because you're my legacy you're my results you're my legacy and my 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 legacy doesn't exist without your legacy so i don't know why students don't see that like it's all about investment but they, they pay for meditation they pay for all these books podcasts blah blah whatever but it's just like it's mind-blowing man but it took me a while too and i was definitely stingy when i was like 5k for a bootcamp you crazy but now i see the own benefit of it right there was a study done i think in the 90s where they they, they measured i think about 90 percent of people don't finish the books that they buy right yeah and i think part of it comes from the satisfaction that you pay for per solution the solutions there so there is some yeah. safety and some comfort in the idea that oh i have a coach working with me now i feel good about that so they don't yeah. have venture out so so in a way we're at we're giving them a service that they need that they they, they think they want it doesn't feel as good because we want to see progress but sometimes you know those clients for them it's like a, a the feeling of safety or having bought the service is enough for them yeah another benefit i get from my clients is also um they tell me that like one one guy got a girlfriend and he's like i'm still doing your stuff i'm like why and he's like because i feel like i'm talking to people in a real way i'm able to talk to guys in a real way and yeah. I wasn't able to do that before. And I think this goes beyond just picking up girls. It's about having the ability to fully express yourself. And I think for me, with my clients, we work a lot on conversation skills because I was so uh, nerdy and so bad at it. I can see the breakthroughs. And my clients, like, I have a feeling my clients aren't as cool as yours. Like they're not as rich, you know, they, they, they're well off, comfortable, steady programmers, you know, Asian guys, some, 50 yeah. guys, and they just want to be able to express themselves and they can't do it. And so I think the other benefit of learning this is being able to communicate well. And what's yeah. funny is when I learned, when I started learning these things, I got better job offers. You know, I went from Google to another Fortune 500 company. My, I could meet people in my interviews. I could tell like hiring managers is getting pissed or they're getting impatient. So I'll throw out a time constraint. Hey, I know you're busy. You know, last thing you want to talk about. So these little things we pick up uh, end up affecting all the areas of our lives. Yep. And then a business mentor in the hallway, you know, walking down, he was walking his dog. This guy helped me make my first million, right? So these are skills that extend beyond just girls. And I think uh, people don't realize that when they train with me. But as they train, they start to realize, oh, it's not just about the girl. It's about being able to go through that search process of, again, who, what, what I want and who I am. Mm -hmm. Once you find that, being able to express that to the world. And actually, certain level your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I think every beginner should work with you first. Like for me, because I'm addition to the social skills, right? Like if a person has zero social skills and they come to me, 
like it's very hard for me to teach that right away and i think that's perfect like i need i want that's one thing i do want to harp on i kind of said cold approach was kind of dead it's not dead you need that basic social skills and then that's something you definitely teach giovanni and i want people to go to you first and then if you want to add tools to that you know work with coach like me or something else right because the social skills are the bare minimum i mean these guys are staying in their rooms and then why do i have no social skills because you're staying in a room all day yeah. so yeah thanks for jumping on do appreciate it where can people find more information about you yeah so i have a website my coaching website is captain dannykim.com the coaching instagram is captain uh kim coaching and then my personal one that has a lot of thirst traps i don't know if you guys want to see that but you could kind of see how i create my instagram uh, go to Captain Daniel Kim. So those are my three. And then my Facebook's Captain uh, Daniel Kim also. Just search that and then you'll find me easily. Um, but yeah, I actually, on Captain Kim Coaching, I do do a lot of reels now um, where I just give you guys tips on anything. Um, so I appreciate that. But yeah, I actually think, I actually want, if I'm going to get students who, clients who want to just learn social skills, I'm going to send them to you, Jim. Because that's actually, you're right. I actually had a huge nugget at the end there. Like you need the basic social skills first. So, yeah, you guys can find me all there. Sounds good. I'll include the links in the description. And then uh, if you get if you get enough views or comments, maybe I'll do another one. We'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Giovanni.